Golden Gate cloning or Golden Gate assembly uses type 2S restriction enzymes. The S stands for shifted cleavage and this crucial property implies that the DNA of interest is digested asymmetrically. Typically, BSA1, BBS1, and BSMB1 are most commonly used enzymes in Golden Gate cloning. For this video, I will take the example of BSA1 to demonstrate. It recognizes this six nucleotide stretch of double-stranded DNA, but it cleaves a non-sequence specific DNA to the downstream side. So in reference to the recognition, the cleavage location is shifted. In case you need more details, check out the restriction enzyme video I have in the playlist. Anyways, following this digestion, you obtain these pieces of DNA that have sticky ends. The ends denote that you can have any sequence, so the cleavage is not sequence specific. This is in contrast to type 2P enzymes, for instance here is EcoR1, which recognizes and cuts at the same location. This ensures compatibility across all EcoR1 sites since recognition and cleavage are sequence specific. Golden Gate cloning uses incompatibility of 2S enzymes. Let's see how this incompatibility develops. As I said, 2P enzymes are always specific, but if we take 2S enzymes, and here again let's use BSA1 as an example, and say this is the DNA where the cut is made, and following the cut you get sticky ends. You can have a second BSA1 site, but here, the sequence underlying the cleavage region is different. Then, the sticky ends produced from this set of digestion by BSA1 are not compatible with the other BSA1 sticky end, hence the incompatibility. This again is in contrast to the example of 2P enzymes. Hopefully this is clear. Now let's develop an intuition for how we can use Golden Gate cloning. Say you have a fragment A that needs to be cloned in a vector. A simple way is to have BSA1 on both ends, and you can insert this into a vector with compatible BSA1 sticky ends. But with Golden Gate cloning, you're actually trying to clone multiple inserts into a vector at the same time. So here, fragment B is the second insert. By the same logic, it needs to carry BSA1 sites at the end as well. You can digest these two fragments, let's say the sticky end, on the fragment A looks something like this, and fragment B looks something like this. Notice that these two sticky ends are compatible with each other. Since cleavage sites are not sequence specific, these compatible ends can be designed however you prefer. If A and B were to be ligated, then they would come together at this complementary region and form a larger insert. Just like this, you can have more insert with respective complementarity and you can keep adding more fragments to build a larger insert. There is a small point that you should keep in mind. Through this property of shifted cleavage, the ends of fragment A and B do not contain BSA1 recognition sequence after digestion, since they are cleaved away. This means all junctions created internally by the Golden Gate cloning cannot be recut by BSA1. Now let's think about the vector, and say that we're trying to insert this A and B combination into the vector. The simplest way is to have compatible BSA1 sites in the vector. After digestion, you get a vector with sticky overhangs that must be compatible with the insert sticky ends. Important point to note is that in this scenario, the recognition site is towards the backbone side. So the recognition is not lost. In contrast, if you had the recognition sequence on the other side, the BSA1 recognition will be lost from the backbone. Now, to clone A and B fragments, you just take the digested products of A and B and mix it in specific molar ratios with the digested vector. Given our design, there is only one direction and one way to circularize and create a final vector. That is, if the insert is established between the vector. And the final product looks like this. In this scenario, the BSA1 sites are retained in the vector which means the final vector can be redigested with BSA1 enzyme to release the A plus B insert. In the other scenario, if you had the BSA1 sites on the outside, the vector will not contain the BSA1 sites, and then the insert cannot be released. This is one way to do it, where the vector contains the type 2S enzymes as well. For Golden Gate cloning, you don't actually have to use 2S enzymes if you don't intend to release the final insert again. All you need are sticky ends on the vector that are compatible with 2S cuts on the inserts. 
which means you can have 2p enzyme for the vector like eco r1 or bam h1 and then you just need to have the inserts that are modified to contain cuts made from 2s enzymes that are compatible with the 2p enzyme cuts. If you truly dig into Golden Gate, you will find that scientists across the world have developed a common language, a syntax for Golden Gate cloning. The syntax refers to the fusion points between any two inserts, which means it is a sequence of overlapping nucleotides between any two fragments. These languages depend on the style of Golden Gate assembly and the enzymes used and their purpose. And there are names of each of these syntax. Depending on species and organism and how complex it is, there is also an uncommon syntax for Golden Gate cloning. You can Google any of these names to learn more about them. Let me demonstrate what it means to be a syntax and how it is applied. I will take the example of Moclo Golden Gate. Pretend that you are trying to clone a series of fragments like these into a vector. This type of structure is a level 1 Moclo module, which as you can tell is a transcription unit which has different parts. Each of these parts may have multiple subparts. For instance, a CDS may be composed of 10 different exons. That substructure is a level 0 Moclo module. You can think of these fragments as A, B, C, D, and so on, which means you will have multiple fusion points in these fragments. These four letters of overlapping nucleotides across level 0 Moclo is a fixed syntax. There are specific overlaps that are considered consensus by the scientists. This syntax is different from the nucleotides used in fusion points across level 1 Moclo modules. After level 1 is level 2, where you are trying to clone more than one transcription unit into a vector. And there is a syntax or specific nucleotides that are considered appropriate for level 2 Moclo cloning. This way, the Golden Gate assembly, or cloning, can be used to go from level 0 structure to more complex level 2 structures, all done in one single ligation reaction. The reason the syntax matters is that you can take any part of the structure and replace it with something else. And you can send it from one lab in a country to another and anyone can use it directly as long as you follow the syntax. This makes things less complicated. Unless you are in Golden Gate community, it is very unlikely that you will run into the details of language and Golden Gate syntax. But in any case, I hope this video was useful, and I will see you in the next video.